This is U Radio. Let your voice be heard. My name is Ryan Funk. You're on U Talk. It's a program dedicated to diversity, highlighting native born and new Canadians' cultures and experiences. I have the pleasure of connecting with Adolfo Cutera. He's the executive director of the Canadian Fossil Discovery Centre. Adolfo works in the field of paleontology, which means he helps dig up and reconstruct fossils of some really old plants and animals. I asked Adolfo about his move to Canada and adjusting to working in science when English isn't your first language. Yeah, well, uh, my background related to paleontology or dinosaurs uh, I started to work with dinosaurs in 1998 in, in a, a big project. Well, actually, it's the biggest project about dinosaurs, about paleontology in Europe. And it's a, a small uh, museum and amusement park in, in Spain, it's uh, Dinopolis. Um, um, I, well, I was lucky enough to, to be part of the team from the beginning. Uh, uh, I started to work there just like two years before the building was uh, finally built. Uh, with so my 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 first uh, my very first job with dinosaurs was was to go an expedition to Colorado in 1988 to excavate a whole dinosaur there for the project. So the the local government paid. Uh, for a dinosaur in the States. Um, the dinosaur was uh, still in the ground and we have to go there and excavate it for uh, in two different years, 1998 and 1999. So that's my very first job. Um, and after that, I, I was involved in totally in the project. Uh, with uh, d designing all the the exhibitions and assembling the exhibitions and organizing mm, the coordination of uh, all all the exhibitions in 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 the project. So I was working there like uh, two years, just just focusing this project. And after that, I I was uh, uh, I was the main provider for paleontological resources for this for Dinopolis during 20 years more. So what kind of spurred that movement to move here to Canada? In 2012 was uh, the year when we decided to, to move from Spain. Uh, probably was the year, even the year where I had more work uh, with, with uh, this staff with dinosaurs in Spain. But uh, and my wife was a uh, uh, civil servant in, in Spain, but uh, we were really tired of uh, so many things um, that, uh, I mean, everything. Uh, it was like, I mean, I, I could give you like 500 reasons to to do this. Um, um, even it was probably my better professional moment that way, but uh, I mean, I didn't care. Um, I remember one day I, I told my wife, uh, probably we have to move. And she told me, that's fine. We can do that. So we started to, uh, I mean, a, a huge research. Actually, we were for more than two years uh, because we were not in a hurry as well. So but we were looking for a place to go. Um, uh, well, Canada always likes for for many reasons, but uh, at that time I had an offer, a job offer from the states, um, uh, because uh, two paleontologists I I knew, uh, Martin Lockley is the probably uh, the, the best, uh, the most famous paleontologist in dinosaur footprints. Um, another American police. Uh, uh, paleontologists, um, well, both were the scientific directors of a new project in Moab, in Utah, is uh, Moab Giants, and uh, is already working at that museum, and they wanted to hire me to to be part of the team. But uh, so 
at the beginning I was looking a little bit about the states because of that, but I mean I wasn't very convinced. <laughs> so, so I was like keeping in mind that project, but uh, I really w we decided to move to Canada even without expectations of any kind. I mean I, I didn't have anything here, so we came by ourselves without any kind of help. And we were looking for a place and we were really searching all Canada, across Canada. Um, we were looking for a few requirements, um, but the most, the two most important requirements were a uh, college of university for my wife, and something related to paleontology. So we were looking for Nova Scotia, we were looking for Vancouver Island, we were a few places. But for many reasons, we decided that uh, the, this area, more than Winkler, was the best for us. We, we wanted a rural area. We were not interested in big cities. And we have the Red River College in Winkler, where my wife studied business administration there. Um, we have the Canadian Fossil Discovery Center. So we came in 2015, um, I mean, with no expectations at all. So. During the, the last, the, the first two years, we were looking to obtain the permanent residence. Um, we were working on it, um, but contacting with the Canadian Fossil at the beginning, I was working a few years as a volunteer here. Uh, my wife is studying in the Royal River College, and we have a son and a, a daughter as well. Um, so, uh, and finally, here we are. Describe kind of that transitional period when you were looking for places in both the United States and Canada. How did you feel you adjusted to life here? To say we are very realistic persons. I mean, uh, we I think we have the, I don't know, the skills to see very well the reality. So we... Uh, we were trying to know how it would be to be here um, um, and what the chances to to progress and, and to, to go ahead would be. Um, I think we did it well because, I mean, we didn't have big surprises here. So we thought that uh, we really matched very well uh, how it would be to live here. Um, um, actually, I mean, after a little bit more than five years we were living here. Um, um, I mean, almost everything was like we thought at the beginning. So we really didn't think about uh, adaptation or progress. I mean, it was like came here and everything was fine. I mean, no surprises at all. The, the people, the community, the culture, everything was something that we felt that we already knew about that. So everything was fine, really. Did you find that there were uh, services and uh, people within the community, maybe even other newcomers, that helped you uh, adjust and you know come into the uh, the community of Morden Winkler? No, uh, we really didn't receive any help because we were not looking for help. I mean, just uh, everything. I like we like to do everything by ourselves. So. We started to make friends. Um, um, we are the, almost the the only uh, people from Spain here. The, I know we, we are another guy living in Winkler, but uh, we don't have any connections with the Spanish community in Winnipeg. There are a lot of Spanish people, but uh, I mean, all our friends are Canadians born in, in the area. so. We are really happy, I mean, with the relation we have with the people, um, everything is, is really, really good. And uh, you mentioned before that you had come to the States to help uh, get that uh, dinosaur fossil. But tell me a little bit about, was there any um, troubles, you know, working in the field of paleontology, uh, any language barriers or that at the beginning or even maybe even now? No, yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it probably is the, the most difficult Probably for me, no, for my wife. My wife uh, works um, all day long by phone with uh, dealers in the States and in, in Ontario and Vancouver. So 
Yeah, I I I never was uh, good for languages probably. So um, in, I remember um, in 1998 was my first time in North America. So it was uh, really challenging because I mean my my language skills were really low. So, but but it was a very very good experience. I mean, it was uh, one of the best experiences I, I have in my life. So uh, right now, uh, still the language is uh, a little challenging all the time. But uh, I mean, I am going ahead with all the projects, all the daily challenges, and uh, I'm okay. I mean. Uh, I need that kind of of demanding, you know, uh, a story because uh, if not, this everything will be very boring. So <laughs> I need I need I need something demanding to do everything every day. Yeah, keep yourself busy all the time. Uh, do you have any advice or uh, words of encouragement for newcomers that are coming to Canada and are wanting? to get into, you know, the field of either paleontology or some other sciences? Do you have any words uh, that you'd like to share with them? Well, that, this world is, uh, is is actually very small. I mean, the world of paleontology in, uh, uh, in all around the world is a small. So, um, um, it works very, very similar in, in every, uh, it doesn't matter if this is in Germany, in Spain, in the States, in Canada, in Australia, uh, I feel that uh, the environment about the people working in paleontology is all the same. We are, we have all the same problems, the same uh, challenge. Um, um, so, for me, it was uh, very helpful uh, to be inside this world of uh, the paleontology, the fossils, because. It makes me feel comfortable uh, because it's not different at uh, uh, the thing where I was doing in Spain or whatever. So it's like uh, a little strange for all people around because uh, normally people don't understand what what is that thing about dinosaur or paleontology. But for me, uh, when I took this position of as executive director here in, in the museum, it's, it's like uh, something very familiar for me because I am in, in my environment totally. I mean, the, making the management, um, um, everything is, is like the same I used to do before. So yeah, I, I, I can say that paleontology was the, the perfect match to, to come here because uh, it's like uh, doing the same thing. If you have any stories you'd like us to share or communities we should highlight, Leave a comment on our social media or reach out to us on our website. I'm Ryan Funk. This was You Talk, and have yourself a good one.